so. Alright, welcome to our next, um, our this week in Sci-Fi on Ice, and this week we read the story The Woodpecker and the Wolf by Mark Haddon, and it's a story about a woman that goes, um, on a, that has a problem. And then she gets rescued, and then she has another problem. Well, maybe that's not true. Well, she goes, she joins the space crew, and uh, it's all about a small group of people who have to deal with, uh, I guess, the harshness of, you know, living in a small community, but remote from a uh, main civilization and the resources that could otherwise help them in certain situations but there's also a personal narrative um for a main character called claire and uh she's spoiler alert she's uh saved at the end well we think so but we'll discuss more about that so guys uh did you like the story all right so i'll cut in and say you know it's a story and what i liked about it was the stakes the you know small group of people and what the they call themselves like the sofa noughts right basically sent out for the rest of their lives to do like science experiments in this faraway planet and uh and you know so they're sort of and then with the uh, a small group of people with really different backgrounds, you know, sort of living together, you see a lot of the uh, the interactions play out with their differences, and you know, and they they do manage it quite well, as I guess pluralistic societies do overall, I reckon. And uh, the the character Claire, I I couldn't relate to the computer game thing that that, that just went over me, but I. I f this is, I guess, why I started it by saying, you know, she is upset, goes on this mission, gets saved, but then is still upset even when she's saved. Um, I mean, that's just me butchering it in, in one sentence. But I, I sort of felt that, you know, and okay, maybe the baby bit, where she had a, all of a sudden, you know, these new ideas of hope and uh, placing, like, the value and, like, you know, her, like, willing to sacrifice herself for the child and as they do with the rations and what and whatnot through the story. Uh, but so, yeah, I I guess there were bits that I was frustrated with, but then there were definitely um, the bits that I liked. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm juggling with these two ideas. So that's me from the get-go. Mm. Well, that's a good, this is a good time, I think, to talk about the ending, because I think it's, like uh, putting the book down that's the thing that stuck out the most to me was the ending and you know thinking like oh is this actually a puzzle did i miss something and um yeah do you guys have a take on the ending um let me try to remember she's there she's with peter they're in this german city which we thought was this imaginary um city uh, that was discussed while they were in space, but as she returns, it turns out to be real, and she t and she ends up going to this place, and then uh, they they're looking they're together they're looking out at the harbor, the boats are out in a flotilla, and uh, she turns around and she looks at the woods or the forest behind her, which has been cut down about a hundred to two hundred years ago, which which she says probably. And then we finish with Peter saying, oh, tomorrow we're going to go sail. And, uh, which, on the face of it, just seems really strange. And, uh, I don't think I've done it justice. Um, and so it kind of got me thinking, like, maybe it's all a big cover-up of some kind. Because she's, maybe she did return. And she was in the press, she was in the media. And this organization, this company, let's assume, who's facilitating this you know venture out to this the deep space doesn't want it to be that oh this is all so shit you know they're gonna 
going to say, oh, everything's fine, and, like, everything's dandy, everything's okay. And, like, I just feel like maybe it's all a big cover-up, and they've just made this little institution, and she's actually just gone to a room, and they've got, like, a fake wall with the scenery, and it's, mm. you know, fake Peter. Okay. But, yeah, I can see that. So they maybe they could, like, Big Brother, they could hear the conversations, and they're like, you know what? Let's make this city. Yeah, like like, like a, uh, the Truman Show. Mm. Yeah, like a robot that's kind of like, oh, yeah, let's take that information and that information. Like, not an actual person, but like an AI. Yeah, I, I buy that. That that may, that kind of works for me. Uh, simply because, like, the, the theme throughout was they're manipulating us. Mm. They're not giving us the true story. And then when she when she's presented with this story, this of you know her future, yeah. it doesn't feel yeah. right, and it's like it's being faked. So, because I mean, yeah, the yeah. fact the fact she goes back to Peter, I can believe because she was so wistful and like, oh, if only and oh, maybe she didn't love him, maybe she loved him too much, and so mm. it seemed like she had unresolved issues. So it's not unsurprising that maybe he was waiting for her, and. Maybe that she's now in an institution. Maybe it's gone crazy, like it was said. Um, and maybe it's just all a big cover-up. See, I, I mean, it kind of works at the end, but the, at the beginning, I, I sort of feel like the way that they were all told that they were going out to do these science experiments, it, if they were really sent out to space to do that, it, it seems so such an expensive sort of project to sort of, to sort of do the, I mean the ending kind of resolves itself with what you've just said but then the beginning like I don't know well, they, had, they had to have people that were I guess at that much of a loss in terms of it doesn't like they're okay with maybe dying right yeah out there, right of not knowing that not knowing what's going to happen I mean it takes a certain type of person to really just you know leave earth for good mm. i mean let alone leaving the country or you know where you live but they're leaving their entire planet yeah but i mean they were supposed to be relieved at some stage yeah yeah that's true um but but i mean doing doing that kind of trip out to space i mean it, it does come with a, a a waiver i suppose to say you know if if uh if stuff goes south you might die. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you do make peace with the fact that you might not return. Yeah. And that's where, like, when she talked about her parents, and it always seemed like that was, you know, she'd lost her parents. She didn't have Peter, this, you know, her love interest. And so I got the sense that she was kind of like, well, there's nothing here for me. Let's go to space. Yeah. But most of, almost all the other people on in their crew kind of had that kind of vibe about them like they all seemed like well they got nothing to do might as well do this yeah none of them were particularly saying oh you know i've got to get back to xyz whether it's family or relationships or no but then they did say about sending messages back and forth and the energy it used so they're obviously communicating with someone you know theoretically they obviously have family back on earth uh, but yeah, no, they did all come across as kind of like a, eh, this is the best place for me, might as yeah. well. Yeah, they were. They didn't seem like social butterflies. It seems like there were so many, so many things happening in this story, and, and for me, I sort of, I really am a big uh, fan of Chekhov's gun. You know, like if you put something in a story, it's got to sort of help either create the world that it is or. Or the narrative and like what happens and there were so many things going on in this story and uh, even, even things like the operation for uh, Dr. John who, who ends up dying and uh, it, well, actually you know I did quite enjoy the scene where there are these the people who are not surgeons they're reading manuals about you know how to do like what was it appendix taking his appendix, appendix out yeah. I don't know what that's called yeah and uh and uh, so I, I quite actually that's probably my favorite part of the book 
is uh, that scene because you know you sort of you know you can imagine it's like I personally you know I had no idea how to get an appendix out and then the author describes you know going through the different tissues and realizing one false move and and actually you know the f bomb comes out and you realize oh probably done something that's not going to be good and then although they complete the surgery the next day you know Dr. John cracks and blood comes out and then boom he's gone but you know and maybe for me that set up like the idea that okay people die and then after that you know they started to drop one by one like an alien but aliens definitely a better story they, they, <laughs> they dropped really quickly like i didn't get the sense that a lot of time had elapsed between them starting to kind of perish i don't know i think it's vague on purpose because i get that sense that there's no sense of time you know it's they're just out there so yeah Yeah. maybe it's the next day maybe it's the next week like there isn't that fixed definition of it because there's this sense of hopelessness of being up there that it doesn't matter Mm. if they die the next day or next week especially when they talk about the rations and how many days and then conserving power when that happened you you sort of you get an idea, but you don't really know exactly, so... And then, in a couple of them take Moxin, the drug that, sort of, I guess, you die, like, under drugs. Yeah, like a, like a peaceful way to go. It's like, you, you check out, you're like, yeah. And, you know, that was quite interesting. But it was quite funny, when, they got, when she got rescued, like, the systems were still running. Like, everything was still working. Yeah, they just shut it down to save energy. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that the, they could never know that that next craft was coming when it did come. But, uh, but yeah, there's always, you know, I suppose hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah, they said that when the, um, like, it was, I don't know, previous time or when they had decided to shut something down, little, like, the actual return journey, that, so the rescue journey, that was actually already just decided. Like they had no way of fu- knowing because their comms were down. They couldn't receive messages, um, and they couldn't go outside or something, wasn't it? They couldn't figure yeah. out what's wrong with it. Um, so they had no way of no- getting a message from Earth that saying someone's on their way. So all that for as yeah, for all they knew, it was going to be another ten years or never. Yeah. Oh, so depressing. <laughs> but anyway, all right. So, shall we comment on the themes on writing next section, mm. or have we discussed that now? We've sort of half done it. Um, I want to. I want to finish on. So, my Chekhov's gun. I think there are a lot of. I think the author. Th- I mean, it is a long short story. But I, I reckon the author put. Like, uh, there were some extraneous elements in the story that I thought, like, it didn't really add to the story. Like, you know, you think about, um, I like the interactions between it and, uh, the characters, sorry. Like, it, the author went into detail to tell you about the names of the rescuers that came. And I thought, like, just don't, just tell me, like, and then there's, like, a rescue crew, and then you could maybe say, and then, like, Sergeant John or whatever, uh, you know, did this and that. The author sort of spent a lot of time to sort of introduce them, and I, I just this kind of this I, I lament this from a writer where it's like that doesn't add to the story, and where you know yes the the rescue team the way actually I like the way the author like sort of alluded to the fact that well here you know the the, the stakes on that it takes them this much time to do the slingshot and get the the rescue spaceship out that way and then you know uh what uh, claire had like maybe 12 months left of um uh, rations and so it was really dicey and you know i really like that but it's just sometimes the author just spent too much time talking about things that didn't help and and I, at I get, the same I, time yeah if if he hadn't been detailed in some ways and had been really detailed in others would there not then have been a discrepancy in how in that then la- sudden lack of detail because he was being fastidious, 
fastidious in your opinion mm -hmm. on everything. And maybe, okay, maybe that's a good, um... Because if he had just, if he had gone into that much detail about the tissue operation and the slingshot and, like, had, like the, I don't know what else, all the communications, and then he said, like, oh, six guys turned up. <laughs> well, okay, but, but not that brief, but I mean, you know, but, but you're talking about the story, not about... Not the fact that six guys turn up. I mean, I wouldn't even care about how many people were on the rescue ship really unless it was important. And and I, I okay, I guess that's just for me. It's like it's the Chekhov's gun principle. It's like you say something. It's like I want to know what that thing does. And and if you tell me the names of it, because because the author does, and I although I forget the names of all the rescuers. And then at the end, it's like well, you know, there's like. Oh, I don't know. It because it describes the author. Um, or the story tells about the rescue of. Claire and and I, I do like the way it's rescued you know there's because it, it's touch and go right because there's sort of there's a sandstorm the sandstorm comes back again because there was one before and then they also delay it and like as a reader you're like no 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 you've got to go Claire, Claire's like in the space station because they miss them up by a couple of I don't know days no, no but uh, when they land they're like a, yeah, yeah. Uh, a thousand Fifteen hundred meters or something or feet away from them, and so you're thinking, no, 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 you got to go now. And they're like, yeah, and no, we're just gonna wait until it's clear, and then we go out, you know. So like, I really like the stakes, but but uh, to the point about the author sort of describing these other things, I'm like, no, 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 don't talk about that. Just talk about what's happening at the uh, time. Yeah, no, I um, uh, I like with the author then the names of the uh, the crew. I'm for both crews it was so multicultural like right. i think he was also trying to imply like how universal it is you mm -hmm. got you got you know eastern names western names nordic names african names like you've got names from all sorts of different regions mm. um to kind of then say that you know this is a worldwide thing earth is so multicultural now <laughs> um, Okay, anyway. so what's the next question? It's um, scores, basically. Is it? Afterwards. All right, the last thing I want to say before we go to the scores is... Have you guys... and I Actually, have you guys seen the movie uh, The Martian with Matt Damon? On The Mars? The Mars Man? Yeah, yeah. Is it the, the yeah. Martian, yeah. It sort of reminded me about that, the stakes about rescuing one person. And part of me kind of thinks like, oh, like, you know, with all the money that Earth has to send, it's quite interesting that you would spend all this money and all this resources in order to save one person. I, I found that quite extraordinary, it, it, both in The Martian and both in this story. It's, you know, there is something compelling. It's like, even though people may die in the process of doing it, but they will do it in order to save that one person. Yeah. No, well, in the book, it wasn't to save her. It was for the entire program, wasn't it? Because it's not like they rushed to go and see if there was anyone there. They were like, oh, let's chill. They're probably all dead. Like, yeah. We'll just wait until yeah. it's better. Like, they weren't there to save. If they were, they would have hurried. Hmm. I'm forgetting now. They... Cause... I haven't seen The Martian. I have no idea what the movie is about, but... Um, in that one, the, they, the they book, definitely know they, in The Martian, but yeah. So in the book, you, like, they land and they're off mark, and they just say, well, there's no hurry, because they're probably all dead. Mm. So we'll wait till it's clearer, and it's less trouble. And then it's not until they see the lights in the window, they go, wait, that's new, and they enlarge mm. the photo and all that. They took their time even, like, making sure... That's new. That's different. Okay, yes, let's send someone. Like, they weren't urgent in the slightest. Yeah, how does that reconcile with our point that the Truman Show theory that we that we talked about at the beginning, does it... Well, maybe because, unbeknownst to Claire, they'd all been saying, I don't know, 
there was bad PR because everyone died and they were like, no, 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 look, look, survivor with a child. Oh my God, first space child. Ooh, let's take care of them. And, you know, who knows? She's going to be some media puppet. More the child than her. I mean, he was born in freaking outer space. He's amazing. He's going to be studied by science. Yeah, because his bones and whatnot were not subjected to to uh, Earth's gravitation, because they mentioned that in the story, it's like half of... Because they've got to take testosterone to uh, maintain uh, bone, bone density or something. Actually, that's something we didn't... I tell you what, at the beginning of the story, that threw me a little bit. I kept thinking, like, oh, and, you know, why is she taking testosterone? And, and it, it does explain, as you, as you go on, that, you know, that... Um, the gravity is different, and so therefore, you know, the weight, that's how, uh, you, you, yeah, you've got to work that out, and I, oh, I, I started to think at the beginning, I was like, oh, is Claire, like, an alien, like, because she sounded a bit different, but then, okay, yeah, no, she's, she's going to space, and she needs to take this in order to deal with this real, uh, environment in this planet, which, I don't know, do they tell us the name of the planet they go to? No. All right. No. Okay. All right. Do you guys have any um, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? What was the name of that protocol that they kept asking about? Ooh, good point. And they who... kept asking to see the protocol. No, no someone wanted to withhold it. Is it Vienna or something? Yeah, but... Oh, it had a it had a name. I can't remember. Where where is it? What page was it? Um, between two twenty and two thirty. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Give me. I think it was Arvind or Per, who's after the after the um. The doctor dies. They kept, and she's and she had become the the now the the medic or the doctor. They kept asking about. Well, he particularly kept asking about this protocol. I recall that they kept saying, oh, you know, should should I tell them at this stage? It was, and then, oh, someone, and then someone wanted to know. Yeah, that was, I forgot about that. That's a good. You're going to cut out this silence while I'm just Yeah, so, so, um, we want to know what is the protocol. Okay. Yeah, Dean, tell yeah, us yeah. What, tell us what you know about the protocol. Well, I mean, we don't really know a hell of a lot about it. But, but, but how does it come up, though? The, how does it come up the, in the story? The, the protocol for delaying survival mm. or, or extending survival. Because she was the only one privy to, to seeing what the protocol was. I don't Kent. know if it was just because she was the medic or... Kent Protocol! I found it! Ah. Kent Protocol. Yeah, not Vienna. I wasn't close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're back in I England. It's a place. It's but, a place. Yeah, and I should have known. Ah, oh, it's my actually, alma mater. Yeah, because actually, I, I got the vibes of South. I don't know why, but like South England, like the characters were like Arvin. Even though it's an Indian name, it's he's he's probably an English Indian. You know? Did and, you imagine them all with British accents? Kind of. Yeah, I did actually. Even no, Suki? not her. Not her. He was Finnish to me. Oh. I thought he was Swedish. I thought Per was a Swedish name, but... No, he was definitely going to be European because he was teaching Suki German. Ah. Oh. He's just so pragmatic and like... I don't know. Finnish. There we go. <laughs> when was this um, story written? It... I, oh, the book, the story itself, I'm not sure. The book was published in 2016. Mm. Uh, give me a moment. 
Let me see if it says. No, it doesn't say this one. That's all right. You know what? It's let's crack on to the score. Are we are we gonna are we gonna get any answer on the well the Kent Protocol? Do we have any sort of insight into what what it the meaning of it? Just that it prolongs their survival. But was there anything important about it? Because I don't. No, because she just wants. She says no. Um, so we never find out. Um, well, it's kind of like Chekhov's gun again. It's it's like you put this thing there and it's... But it's know. the act of her not knowing, right? She, so it's this thing that's supposed to be super important in case all things go, you know, all shit hits the fan. And she actively says no, because it doesn't matter. So I, I think that just adds to the hopelessness, that knowledge of no, because what's the point? Right? Yeah, nothing There's, in there is going to help us. Powerlessness. So I, I, I buy the I buy the hopelessness, anything? but I'm I'm still kind of like I, I was sort of ah uh, like because it doesn't if you take it away there's still the hopelessness is still there and I don't know ah uh, okay that's just yeah. me that's just me that's it adds to it brings it home all right let's go let's go to the score we do ooh scores do we out of 500. Who wants to go first? Dean, you go first. I will go first. Um, I quite enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a... Out of 500, let's say 287. You quite liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Out of, what is that? No. I mean, it wasn't, it, wasn't a literary, it wasn't a literary marvel, but, it, but I enjoyed it. So, well, yeah. the official quote, it wasn't all that crap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put that in the dust cover. Wait, say it again. What was it? Two... I'm running 287. It down 287. Um, yeah. Okay, let me see. What? Um, let me... Okay, let me refresh Dean's score. Dean, your score... Uh, where is it? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, 287. Okay, Sarah, do you want me to go next, or, or do you want to go? You go next, because I'm Yeah. So, I was conflicted in this story. There were things that I really liked. I liked... I really would have liked this story if it had gone more with... Um, I liked the interaction between the characters, but if it had gone more about, like... If it had centred the story, and I'm big on emotional centre in the story, if it centred it around, oh crap, there's a baby, and we're gonna die, and then the rescue team comes, and then, you know, Claire's, like, battling with what, uh, you know, survi uh, survival with the baby. I would have liked the story to be more, but I just felt like the story just had too many things in it. Um, so I overall did not like the story, but I did... I would have liked it, okay, I would have liked it if it was more focused on, like, as a short story about the baby, so I'm gonna go 311 is my score. That's... Says the person who doesn't like it, a higher score than the person who said I didn't quite like it. <laughs> yeah. I did think you were gonna go lower than that, but, but what? yeah, I still, I still really liked it. Well, Even though my well, score weirdly doesn't reflect it now. <laughs> do you want to change your? Do you want to change your? I, I don't mind changing it. Okay, let me put mine up. Um, Where's my score? No, he wants to get two eighty-seven. That's it. Well, make it. It make doesn't it, matter because make it three eighty-seven. Really make it a three eighty-seven. No, no, no. Because my score is really gonna bump it up anyway. Okay. <laughs> no, because Fiend. I did enjoy the storyline because I feel like I've watched <laughs> sci-fi movies that Fiend, follow going... the same kind of theme. Doesn't matter, it's too late now. The die has passed. <laughs> They've all died. <laughs> she survived. Um, yeah, yeah Sarah, Sarah, go ahead. Uh... We'll see, because Mark Haddon is like one of my favorite authors ever. So okay. I'm never going to go lower than like a 400 for him. Mm -hmm. um, like he could write a menu and I'd still think it was excellent. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm going to give him 460. 
four six zero. There we go. Yes. We have it. Let me see. That should be a good average. Let me add seven <laughs> seven seven. Yeah. But, but, uh, no, and basics, yeah, because every single story in this collection, The Fear Falls, I think is excellent. I highly recommend reading, okay. especially the first one. Oh, I cried. All right, so the aggregate score is... Um, well, we need trumpets. Your aggregate... Oh, wait. Oh, I messed that up totally. I could... I don't... Why do I have to do this every time? I have to change... Uh, cell format. What do I have to? I you hate. think you remember? <laughs> Two point six 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 six. Yeah, that's what's showing up. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> wait, format cells. It's so difficult to find as well. It's not a okay number. I don't know why have it decimal places zero. Just give me a, a number. I don't like. To, uh, okay, let me save it again. Should we have double trumpets? Let's have double trumpets. All right, your score today, your aggregate score of The Woodpecker and the Wolf by Mark Haddon is 353. All right, well done. That's not bad, a great, not bad. That's a great discussion, and I wish, I wish that, uh, I, I felt that, yeah, by starting at the end, I definitely confused myself in this conversation, right? Then we, we sort of went backwards from the end. Well, that's okay. So, i tell you what. Let us compare. Compare, compare. Um, okay, our lowest score, I've got, I'm looking at our table of all our other scores over so the other books. Um, our lowest score is Harrison Bergeron with 301, and then we've got the Moral Virologist at 349. And I guess what? The Shape of My Name also got 353, the same as The Woodpecker on the Wolf. <laughs> it's ex- that's crazy, it's the same. Whereas... I just pick really good average stories. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 7 out of 10, I mean, I you know, it's alright. It, it works out alright, you know. I like that it's, you know, the score is not dependent on one person. It's, you know, the average kind of, you know. I Keep like going. that. I like it. So, so now, so, oh yeah. So okay, I my story is uh, uh, I'm gonna choose a story for next week, and it's I'm gonna choose an author that we've already read, but uh, I think, um, but the story is very different from all the other stories we've read, so I think it'd be good. So I'm going with Isaac Asimov. Nightfall, it's a classic. It was recommended by John Campbell, who is the basically the contemporary author of the Western uh, sort of arch- archetypal stories, or you know, with the whole redemption uh, character. So Star Wars, basically, George Lucas is uh, characterized as being um, the epitome of you know, Star Wars is the epitome of um, of his work, basically. So. And then he told Isaac Asimov to write the story. So we are going to read that this week. Yay! Okay, so that is the end. And it is so sorry, Sarah, for um, we've taken you 10 minutes over time. But, uh, All right, I'm, that's why I said 6.45 and not 7. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so <laughs> time to say goodbye. Yeah, he's, she's got a bad headache. Go. You heard it? Yeah. <laughs> I heard these right. twice earlier as well. Really? And okay. there's women off the phone. Bloody hell. Keep your women in check, guys. Come on. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. Thank you very much. I think it's a just, just. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.